So E3 2018 came and went, and unfortunately we did not get a new Dragon Ball game announced at E3, but we got something kind of similar. That's right, there's going to be a new Shonen Jump crossover fighting game called Jump Force. And if you've played other games or heard of other jump games like Jump Superstars, Jump Ultimate Stars, J-Stars Victory Versus, Jump Force is the newest title that goes with that series. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the early E3 impressions of Jump Force. So as far as we know, there's going to be tons of characters that are going to be in the game from the history of the Shonen Jump publication. That includes, of course, Dragon Ball. We've got Dragon Ball, we've got Naruto, we've got One Piece represented, plus other shows like Death Note. Those characters will be in the game. Some won't be playable, but they will be in the game. So here to join me to talk about this, I was not there at E3 this year, unfortunately, but this person was. Please welcome back to Geekdom 101. Haven't been here for a while, but I'm glad Kendamu is back. You were there at E3. You got to play it? Yes, I was. I got to go to Bandai Namco. I got to go into a nice little uh, kind of social media influencer room and uh, try out all kinds of demos back there for them. That's awesome, and I'm very happy that you got that opportunity. Um, now, you have played... Jump Superstars, I believe you said, and Jump Ultimate Stars. You have experience with these Jump crossover games. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I played Jump Superstars. Uh, it didn't come out in English, but I managed to nab an import copy, and I played that. And at the time, I was heavily studying Japanese in college, so like I was able to get through most of the game. Uh, I really only had to refer to an FAQ a couple of times. And I played the demo for uh, J-Stars, but uh, yeah, um, Jump Force is kind of like my first real big jump back into jump games. I'm saying jump a lot since Jump Superstars. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, you know, for those unaware, you know, this is going to be a big kind of crossover game with all the different series, uh, or at least a lot of them that are published in Shonen Jump or, you know, Shueisha publications like Dragon Ball, Yu Yu Hakusho, Saint Seiya, Fist of the North Star, and then you have other ones. you got Naruto, One Piece, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Hunter x Hunter. I'm not confirming which characters will be in the game because the game's not out yet, but see, these are the different series that have been published in Shonen Jump. I mean, in Japan, Shueisha owns all the Jump magazines, and Jump is like the number one manga publication in the country. It publishes all the big manga all the classic ones are there, and with these games, when they come out, you know, you have these these big crossover battles where you can pick different characters and have them fight. It's sort of like uh, King of Fighters or, in some ways, Smash Brothers, which was also announced at E3. So, are you a fan? We know you love Dragon Ball, but are you a fan of some of these other manga, and are you excited to kind of do these what-if combinations, and is, is it a draw for you when you play this game? Yeah, um, even with some of the manga that I don't necessarily read, I am a fan of Jump in general, and I, I've i subscribed to Jump several times, even back when, just when it first came out as, you know, a, a paper magazine in the U.S., like, that's actually how I got into Naruto, was through official U.S. Shonen Jump, and uh, same thing later on with uh, One Punch Man. And there, there's been others that I've read also. I've read portions of Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, Hikaru no Go. Uh, there, there's a lot of cool things to read in Shonen Jump, and it's really cool seeing those things show up all together in a, in a Jump game. What? Of course, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of weekly Shonen Jump, but that does not necessarily mean that we're not going to get characters as bonus items or as cameos later on, but we'll see what happens when that comes out. Uh, you know, there are other Jump publications. Now, IGN had reported, and I don't always trust IGN, to be honest with you. I don't really trust them that much. But they did say that the demo was not very good, the one that you played at E3. So, did you have fun with the demo? What were your initial reactions, you know, on the the, the demo overall? Uh, I thought the demo was pretty fun. Uh, the controls were pretty easy to get down. Uh, usually with these demos, what they have is they have a they have like kind of a small TV in front of you, and you have a controller or two controllers, depending on the game, uh, in front of you. And then on a little kind of table on a surface that the controller was sitting on, there is like a controller with a layout of the different uh, what the different buttons do, and so you can kind of refer to that while you're playing the demo. And it was, I mean, I was 
pretty well able to just pick it up and play it. Not necessarily master it, but I was able to do some basic attacks. After two or three playthroughs, I got a good idea of sort of like the countering system that they had going on. Um, I learned pretty quickly how to do uh, how to do like special moves and everything, how to trade out between characters and use assists. And uh, it's it's not something that is too hard to get into, and it is plenty fast-paced enough that, you know, it drew me in right away. You know, the game is three-on-three -three tag fighting, but it's not like 2D like Dragon Ball Fighters. It looks and feels, well, you have to tell me if it feels like it, but it actually looks more like Xenoverse, but different. It, it definitely has a different kind of look to it graphically. You know, how do you think they put, what is your opinion on how they put this together? Because you've got characters from other series mixed in with really strong Dragon Ball characters, of course. You've got them fighting, and obviously Dragon Ball characters, at, you know, depending on what part of the series we're talking about here, can blow up planets with ease for the most part. So it's just one of those things where did they have to kind of tweak it to where to make it more like it's a fair fight? And how how was the the initial gameplay like? Like, can you describe the gameplay? Like, is it like Xenoverse? Um, it's sort of like Xenoverse in that you know it is over the shoulder and you're going toward you know and you're going toward your opponent and everything. But there's only one opponent on screen at the, at a time. Uh, you know how you kind of tag in and out in uh, fighters. It's sort of the same way. And rather than like in fighters where you have a life bar for each character, you have one life bar for your team overall. That's interesting. That's and, very interesting. Uh, you, and you can do assists or you can tag in and out. And uh, the gameplay, like it feels a bit like Xenoverse in that like you hold a shoulder button and then you use a face button to do a special move. Oh, and yeah. it feels a bit like fighters in that... Uh, you have shoulder buttons for for tagging in and out and for assists and you know that sort of thing and the the look and the feel um, the with the characters anyway I didn't really get too I didn't really get too uh, how do I want to say it I did not I wasn't too concerned with the power scaling um, there really there may be, be something like in the game that explains how all these characters can kind of be in the same place together. There might not be. I'm not sure. But when I say, say I switch to Naruto from Son Goku and I'm fighting Frieza, like I wasn't all like, oh no, Naruto with his basic Rasengan is not going to be able to put a dent in Frieza. Like that wasn't really a thought going through my mind. It was just, hey, this is fun. I'm playing as a character that I like. I'm fighting a character that I like. It's pretty similar to like if you were playing like Budokai 3 back in the day and you were playing as like Krillin and you were going up against Broly or something like that. You know, it's just whatever. Uh, it's, yeah, it's no, just fun. it's a game. You, you can't overthink these games. So you're basically saying that you think that Xenoverse players should get the hang of this relatively easy, but there's a tag thing with the three on three tag. So I wanted to ask you about that. Um, how are the combos in this game? You know, because with, with, with Fighters, which is a totally different kind of game, but maybe there's some something like this in this game. You have characters that can do... You obviously have combos. I assume this game has easier combos, but can you do where you can combo and then tag your partner in and then they pick up the combo and just juggle your opponent constantly like that? Is that in this game or is it much simpler? I saw... Okay, so when I was playing it, I was playing it in a very simple sort of button mashy kind of way. But when I was in the press presentation for, for upcoming Bandai Namco games, one of the things they showed off was exactly that. Like being the in the middle of a combo combos. and then tagging someone in to finish the combo, uh, doing like juggle combos and stuff like that especially considering that in this game there isn't really free flight all over the place like xenoverse like you're running around on the ground and then you have like some air dashes and stuff like that uh so th there there were those things and they were shown in the promotional video and they were pointed out by the bandai namco marketing people who were showing this game to us but yeah they, they weren't something that i personally experienced so graphically you know, the game, to me, looks great. I think that the character models, I've seen some complaints on them. I really don't see there being an issue here. You know, I never look too deeply into this kind of stuff when it comes to video games because 
it's a game and it's a crossover game. So you have to make everybody look relatively alike despite the different art styles of the different manga artists. Uh, how did you feel about the graphics? Because the one thing that stood out to me was not just the special moves, you know, the, the, the really powerful moves, but also the, the backgrounds looked incredible. Like, what's up with the whole thing? You can incorporate the background into the fight. Okay, so what we learned from the trailer, from promotional material that has been online, and from the and from the press uh, presentation was that the Dragon Ball and One Piece and Naruto characters and all the Jump characters and everything, the Death Note characters, they are somehow crossing over into our world, and the worlds of the different manga are kind of like blending into real places. So like one thing you kind of want to look out for while playing this is like you're in a city and there's elements of like Naruto backgrounds and everything kind of making its way into into like New York City. Or you're up in the mountains and you see, you know, Frieza spaceship and like a little like round space pod from, you know, like the Ginyu Force or whatever. And... Uh, Everyone, the, the way their textures are and everything are because specifically something has happened and they are somehow all crossed over into our world. So, what I, and I noticed that when I watched the trailer before going to E3, I saw these textures and everything and like I was maybe nitpicking them a little bit. Like I was like, eh, I don't know if Goku's boots should look that clothy. They're supposed to be pretty heavy. But, uh, but once I got in to just start playing the game, that aspect of it really wasn't something that like my mind was really too focused on. At that point, I was just kind of like, all right, I got to beat up Sasuke now. What impressed you the most about Jump Force playing the demo? And what do you think is a negative that should be improved upon before the final release? Because the game's coming out 2019. We don't have a release date yet, but it's next year. So what impressed me the most was just how easy it was to pick up and play which is something that I think is is pretty common when I think back to different Dragon Ball games, different Bandai Namco fighters and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I also played, you know, the new uh, My Hero game, that sort of thing. Uh, there, that it was very easy to pick up and play. I didn't have to look at the controller thing too much to figure out what was going on in the most basic sense, but it, but there's also plenty of room for people to get really good at it and do some really skilled things that would take a lot of practice. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and the thing that I think probably needs to be worked on or things that I didn't like or things that kind of messed with me would be uh, I don't like that your whole team is on one life bar. It would be pretty nice if like, you know, like fighters where or, or like a lot of other tag fighting games where you have individual life bars for each person on your team. I mean, right. it was pretty. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's been a long time, but I'm pretty sure it's the same way with Jump Superstars. Like everybody that was like that you could tag in on your team had their own life bars. Um, so that was something that was kind of. I mean, maybe it makes the matches go a little faster, but it, it was something that I wasn't expecting, and it made and it made things just kind of go a little too quickly for me. And then the other thing, which isn't necessarily a negative, but it's something to look out for is that the way you tag and the way you assist are the opposite of Dragon Ball Fighters, where in Fighters, you know, you tap to assist and you hold to tag in. You actually tap to tag in and hold to assist in, in uh, Jump Force. That's, that's, I can get used to that, though. I can get I used to it, but it, it though, threw yeah. me off at first. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, as of right now, we don't really have a full character roster at all. I mean, we can expect, based on previous Jump games, you know, we're going to get, obviously we know Dragon Ball, Naruto, One Piece. We're going to get Fist of the North Star, most likely. Uh, probably JoJo, Hunter x Hunter, uh, Bleach, all the big shows. You know, the big, well, not really shows, manga, but they became big shows, of course. Yu Yu Hakusho, I could totally see those being represented in this game. You know, there's been some discussion about whether or not we're going to have My Hero or Saitama in the game, uh, One Punch Man. And, you know, it's been a debate because people are saying, well, they are owned. Here's the thing. They are owned by Shueisha. Shueisha publishes One Punch Man 
um, in Japan and the United States, you know, it's, they own Viz too. They're, they're the parent company and Jump. So they could legally be in the game, but we don't know as of right now if they are. Some are saying they're not. Some are saying they will be. But either way, you can expect the legendary characters of Shonen Jump to be in this. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to Arale, man. Arale would be the most amazing character to have on any team in any jump game right well any final thoughts before we get out of here any final thoughts on your experiences with Sh jump force and also don't forget to plug the rebooted kendamu channel kendamu has returned but this time better than ever with a brand new series i'm doing it for you aren't i i'm doing it for you you are Battle doing breakdowns it for me. You, you go ahead. You have okay, okay. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this game. I did not expect to be looking forward to this game, but I am looking forward to it. I do want to play it, and I hope that you all enjoy it too. I, I sound like someone who works for Bandai Namco. I swear I don't. I don't Maybe get paid you to will do this. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited for this game. And yeah, it wasn't a Dragon Ball game, but hey, Fighters is coming to Switch, so there's that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for it. And as for me... I am doing a channel again. I had one for a long time, and then it kind of went away. But I have one now where I am doing something called Battle Breakdowns, where I take the different battles in the various parts of the Dragon Ball franchise, and I break them down with my martial arts experience to kind of tell you the realistic aspects and the unrealistic aspects of Dragon Ball fights. Even the stuff that, like, has no bearing on reality, seemingly. Like, you know, a special beam cannon, Makan Kosapo, whatever you want to there's call it. There's gotta be something that Toriyama got the idea from, right? Right, there's gotta be something. Because it pulls from, you know, uh, Dragon Ball back to, like, Kung Fu movies and Kung Fu movies back to, like, real, real martial arts. So there, there's some cool little things to pick out from there. And that's sort of what I'm doing. Yes, it's, it's really unique content. Nobody else is doing it. And I think it's pretty cool. And I think y'all should check out the new Ken Dahl. I'll leave a link to the channel down below. Thank you for being here. It means so much to me you were able to take some time out of your busy schedule to talk about E3 and, and, and your experience playing Jump Force. Because I'm not going to get to play this game uh, for a while. Well, I'm sure we'll get a demo at some point. Probably like January. Probably. And, and I, you know what? I think you're going to like it. And, you know, thanks for having me. Yes, and check out Battle Breakdown, check out Kendama, we'll talk to y'all soon. Read the damn manga.